在这一次 MSI 的时候，就是四强输给了铁二嘛，然后我觉得，我觉得是应该的。铁二当时的状态比我们好很多，然后我们当时的准备，个人的状态呀和整体团队的准备可能也没有不，就是不不足够。然后现在小组赛还要跟他们，就是碰到了，那总体来说还是要。嗯，应该来说我们要赢他们才对嘛，所以说这次可能要就是跟 M S F 不太一样，然后就是尽量把自己的状态和整体的整体的团队要提高一些嘛，就是水平来说。Great to hear there from Rookie.、Uh, Captain Flowers has been subbed out. Medic is here. We get Medic any time. Medic, Medic. Let's go. <laughs> League of Legends. Jack, you can be involved.、Yeah. In and、it. we also have a sweet game、we、between、do. IG and TL. There is so much historical context for this game. Team Liquid defeated the world champions at MSI in that semifinal, and then IG didn't make it back that far. So. Just so much going into this game. So Kale going to be taken off the board from the side of、Invi uh, Team Liquid. Uh, Invictus Gaming going to ban away the Jarvan. Bear in mind that Team Liquid will be on the blue side. They will have priority in the pick. And I mean, how can we not talk about the last time that these two teams met, Jat? It was heavily favored in、uh, in Team Liquid. They went three one. It was a close series overall, though there was a lot of back and forth. We went to a lot of late games, but Team Liquid. They found a dominant win, and after the confidence of their win yesterday, Team Liquid must be feeling good. Yeah, and I listened to a doublelift interview, and if you look at a big picture, in a lot of ways, Team Liquid got a raw deal. They take down the defending world champions 3-1 in the MSI semifinal. That, in many ways, was labeled a fluke. Then they get 3-0 by G2 in the final. No, that's actually how good both teams are. The double standard was called out by doublelift in an interview, and in many ways, I think there's truth to it. So now at the World Championship. IG really wants the revenge against Team Liquid, but TL have a huge chip on their shoulder, and they want to prove they're good as well. And especially after how well Team Liquid did yesterday, I think they'll th they'll believe they've gone a step towards proving that they can overcome、mm -hmm. this chip on their shoulder. We have a、uh, Jarvan, Pantheon, Galio bans. Kale, Kiana, and Syndra have been removed, and now first pick available for Team Liquid. So a lot of dive removed on the side of Invictus Gaming, but this will allow Team Liquid to prioritize the. Gragas, very safe, well, very well-rounded AP source of damage for the side of Team Liquid, and can also be flexed. I feel like we don't typically see a lot of core JJ support Gragas, but I'm not going to count out that it can't be played. Has been locked in, and、uh, the Gragas, as you say, been locked in already. There's the Olaf straight away for Invictus Gaming, looking perhaps to team that up with a Carly. So this will be really interesting to see how Invictus Gaming run this game because for Most of the year, Vedius and I were just talking about this. The best early game teams were the best teams, and so much of League was about accelerating the early game and smashing the team by 15 minutes so you could end by 25.、Uh, team Liquid, while they had good goal differences early game,、um, didn't feel like they tried to do it in that way. However, at Worlds so far, the early, the first 15 minutes, teams aren't separating far from each other. I think the largest goal lead at 15 was actually just clutch against Fnatic. So those aren't even leads that are big enough to decide the game. So how will this meta shift? Because IG, at least with the Olaf, look like they're trying to push the tempo. Looking for those early game ganks. Kaiser locked in for Invictus Gaming, and it's the lovers duo in the bottom lane for Team Liquid, Zaya and Rakan. This is no. Ordinary Kaiser, though, medic. This is Jackie Loves Kaiser.、Mm -hmm. This is the champion that he is known for worldwide. This is the one that he has a skin for after winning the world championship last year. <laughs> And I was going to say that Nautilus is what you typically <laughs> pair up with it, but they're going for the fiddlesticks in the bottom lane. The secret tech to counter Rakan. He jumps at you. You point and click him. <laughs> Just done. He's now terrified for three seconds. Who knew and that Rakan's biggest counter was Scarecrows? Well, we'll, we'll see we'll how see. it plays、we'll、out. As I, I, I personally haven't seen this match. Birds are afraid of Scarecrows. Right? So, like, in terms of law sense, <laughs> that definitely works. I mean, Victor's game is going to get rid of Jensen's LeBlanc as their first ban, and Team Liquid now deciding where they want to put this second ban phase. Okay, that that was a lot to take in. 
<laughs> just the old. Was it? <laughs> yeah, that was more than I was. Uh... Well, yeah, as we were saying, like I was expecting like a Nautilus. Nautilus Kaiser is what we often see paired up with the Kaiser. It's something that Bowland played a lot of, uh, especially in their best of fives to even qualify for the World Championship. Uh, we already talked a little bit about the Olaf, but I am very excited to see where Leanne puts a lot of his early focus because I feel like that he, as a jungler, is still figuring out his role and responsibilities within this team. Obviously, replacing Ning, a very well known and hyper aggressive jungler. Land seems to be more of a follower, but Raz has told me that he is capable. He has the skills to have high impact early. He just needs the tools to do it, but he's now got those tools. Can he actually do it against the likes of Team? Yeah, and I love how long these teams are taking on these bands because the whole draft is now going to focus around the soul laners, both teams completely waiting to get these soul lane picks. Banning the Shy's Fiora, I think, is wise. Also, Jace, Liquid just trying to make it so Invictus Gaming can't pick these incredibly lane-smashing champions because I feel like Team Liquid wants to get into the mid or late game with close gold. Then they can try and win in the same fashion that they beat Demo. And although the Shy hasn't played Jace at all in summer, he is 12 and 1 on it across the course of the year, so it makes sense to get rid of a powerful pick. Oriana will be the lock for Rookie we expect in the mm. mid lane. Wow, I'm quite surprised that you would blind pick an Oriana. We already saw it uh, last game for Damonte in the mid lane, but uh, we'll see what Team Liquid has an answer for it. The Gangplank gonna come out, yeah. so safe top side. Team Liquid right now have a very Team Liquid draft, I would say. Yes, they do. Strong bot side that's very easy to play around. Safe weak side top laner, susceptible to dives, but usually pretty safe scales well can also impact the bot. Now I expect something like a LeBlanc if we are going very Team Liquid, because that is something yeah. I think uh, yeah, of course, it's banned away. That's my yeah. mistake there. Probably so, why they're taking so long with this pick. Okay, so they're going to go for the Akali, the dive focus that we saw from Fnatic last game. I think that in the early laning phase, as we mentioned, it will struggle. Um, but this is also something we've been seeing a lot of from Jensen, especially in playoffs. And I love how, compared to MSI, he's roaming a lot more on this pick as well. So I'm excited to see what he can do uh, in regards to the other lanes as well. Vladimir coming in for the Shy as well, I think is going to be really cool to see. It's one of the more classic, hey, this is really good into GP picks. And also the Shy seems like he he might have a little bit of an, a rivalry with Nogri <laughs> uh, because he did an interview where he said, no, I am nothing like this player. Yeah. Stop comparing me to this player. And people have been talking all about Nogri's Vladimir. You know who played Vladimir before that? <laughs> the shot and it was a dominating pick so i want to see what he can do on that champion i feel like we've got pretty solid team fight comps coming out from either side the biggest yeah. difference is this discrepancy in the junglers where smithy's gragas will offer more in later game team fights but lan will have a lot more control in the early game and because he's going to have pressure in mid and i imagine he's going to have pressure in bot as well because fiddlesticks will be able to throw a lot of poke help kaiser push out that wave he's primarily going to play through the bot side of the map which could force X Smithy to play away from this lane, which goes against how Team Liquid typically like to play. I think that's the question, isn't it? Do you meet Leian head on early game and play through your strong Zaya Rakan, through the Akali, or do you play up towards that top side of the map, the weakest side of the map that you mentioned in the form of the Gangplank? We'll see a lot on the line between these two teams, Team Liquid and Invictus Gaming, challenging for MSI. Finish my sentence, challenging for MSI redemption here. Uh, Invictus Gaming fell, of course, 3 1 to Team Liquid Jet. Many people said it was a fluke. Many people said Invictus Gaming beat TL in the group stage. So on the day, IG just had a bad day, but Team Liquid over and again have been proving to us that they can take on the best in the world. And TL absolutely, I think, can come into this with a chip on their shoulder, winning four splits in a row in North America, making semi or making finals of MSI, and also taking down Dom Juan on day one of the World Championship group stage. But this is a tough group. We're expecting TL, IG, and Dom Juan to fight for those two seeds. So anytime any of those three cross play each other, 
the implications are huge. And you can see how we have the stats on your screen of the last time TL and Invictus Gaming did meet in that semifinals. It wasn't dominating. You can see the goal difference of 15 on average was actually negative, and 50% of the Barons went to Team Liquid. It was a hard fought back and forth, mm -hmm. long drawn out series, which Team Liquid was able to come out on top of. And it's something that I believe in my heart that Team Liquid has over many of the teams, and it is consistency. I feel like you get the same thing from TL over and over. And I feel like that as players, they have grown throughout the year, but that level of consistency, where if you make that mistake, they were very quick to punish and capitalize, is something that I think favored them very uh, heavily when they last went up against IG. And you know who's not consistent? IG. Any, <laughs> yeah. e even a single player on this team. Yeah. <laughs> they all seem to have their whoopsies. Jackie Love was talked about as the most consistent member of the team. He had a bad day one. Yes, he yeah. did. Right? <laughs> he died uh, multiple times in that AHQ game. So you never really know what you're going to get with this IG team. We know they're sealing 3-0 World Final. We know how amazing they can be. But this year, especially the summer split, because they won the spring split, was anything but consistent. Rookie missed a significant amount of time. He has not looked the same since he's come back. He's looking better and better. But you can imagine. IG has just circled this game and put so much importance into it to try and get a little bit of revenge. Now, we can see that Invictus Gaming do have push in both mid and bot. I like a bit of a freeze that Jensen has set up there to make his laning phase a little bit easier, but as we can also see, Gragas doing a safe clear, excuse me, towards the bottom side of his map. Mm -hmm. I wonder if he's going to, yep, yeah, base and then go for the early Predator boots, whereas Olaf just powering through his jungle. He's actually going to be passing up towards top side rather than cover for the bottom side of the map. It obviously makes his clear speed easier because he has the early blue to help with his jungle clear, but uh, I'm surprised that he wouldn't look to try and cover and protect Jackie Love and Rookie, especially this early into the game. One of the fastest full clears, though, on Olaf. Definitely wanting to try and pull that off. He'll be level four right after that Krug. Um, less than three minutes and 10 seconds into the game. So uh, actually a full level up on x Smithy's Gragas, but down the Predator boots. Impact pushing in in the top lane. Leon will clear, perhaps look to push towards the Gragas jungle. Smithy that was a sweeper on the whole yeah. screen. <laughs> yeah. I, I thought Nocturne was in the game. That's how wards second. feel. But uh, for now, it looks like neither of the junglers will meet. Leanne just trying to get control of both the Scuttle Crabs. So it's important to note that because Ix Smithy went back to base, he went topside to try and secure the, um, the Scuttle Crab. But because he got forced back by Leanne, he's now likely going to lose both of them, which means that Invictus wow. Gaming will have full control over the river, and Leanne is going to have a large jungle advantage over Ix Smithy. Now, we expected this. This is typically how the matchup goes. Gragas can do very little when in a direct matchup against the Olaf, and because of Leanne's fast clear speed, notice he still has two of his health pots yeah. up. So um, it's challenging for Ix Smithy to even challenge the Olaf in the early game. You can see early on that jungle deficit is leading to a bit of a gold lead for IG. They're about 500 gold ahead. Some of that will be the CS in every single lane as well. IG just out farming their counterparts. But now X Smithy perhaps will look up towards the top lane. The Shy on this oh, Vlad okay. has pushed up. X Smithy has not been spotted. Here we go. First gank of the game. X Smithy coming in with the Predator. The Shy will now know that the jungler is nearby. Has the Sanguine Pool, but X Smithy's not going to use the Belly Bot quite yet. There it comes. They're looking for the chase. Shy will flash away. I like how Xsmithy led the queue, but it wasn't quite far enough to get the second slow. Still able to get the flash out of the shy and give Impact a bit of an edge in that lane. Liam making his way towards bot. Is he going to look for a dive? How low have they poked? I mean, with Aftershock Fiddlesticks, it's actually pretty decent at diving. He can tank a good number of shots and apply this. There's not much of a minion wave there. Oh, they're going anyway. Dark Wind yeah. just coming up cooldown. There's the fear onto double lift, but the knockup's going to land. Double lift heals up underneath the turret, still alive, and Leon is tanking. You got him first. Blood to Team Liquid, and now the teleports come in. Double lift is low. Rookie came down from the mid lane, but couldn't find it. And now Jensen's looking for the kills. Chasing in. Jackie Love has to burn his heal. X Smithy on his way to join the fray. The fight continues in the bottom lane as Team Liquid tried to force IG back. Knockout comes down, but Team Liquid will not chase any further. And Invictus Gaming mess up the dive. Leanne hits a little too early and gets tower aggro. It's just as you said, Jack, they wanted to use uh, the the aftershock on the fiddle to be able to tank the tower, but he never got that aggro, which meant that the dive went horrendously for Invictus Gaming. And it means that Team Liquid are able to 
get some of that gold back in their pockets. Now they're the ones in the advantage. Impact still just farming up in the top lane. Do want to bring attention to the fact the Shy is not running Kleptomancy, hasn't gone for Cull, isn't going <laughs> for the Nuguri build in the top lane, instead has Phase Rush and has picked himself up a Phoenix, uh, Phoenix Codex. And the Phase Rush is much stronger in team fights, but you can argue about the gold in the other way. Watching this again, you really wanted Baolan to get turret aggro, but it does go on to lay on. So Baolan ends up mis-executing dive. Jackie even got turret aggro early, so he was back just really sloppy, all things considered. And they burn three summoners, but end up giving first blood over. So definitely a misplay by IG. I also think that the dive was just overforced as well because they didn't have teleport on their mid laner. The minion wave wasn't fully stacked and it was very risky, but that is IG in a nutshell. They like to take risks. They're not afraid to take these gambles. And given the early lane advantages that they did build, notice the mid lane uh, CS discrepancy. Yeah. Rookie, even though he's had a con inconsistent split and a difficult split, uh, still showcasing that in a winning matchup, he can be very impressive. Really can, and IG are going to try and get a little bit of control back over the river. Smithy behind in farm, but has had quite a lot of impact on this map early on. For the moment, Rookie is just going to be given across his blue buff. And we, we did talk a little bit early in the, in the pick and ban phase about how getting a gold lead early on in games hasn't really meant that you're going to win games. It's not the yeah. MSI style that we've seen before. And coming back to your point about AHQ, they actually had the largest lead at 10 minutes of any team yesterday against IG. And it was, of course, IG who took the win there yesterday. It's really interesting to see how this meta will evolve, whether it's just game one for these teams, not wanting to take too many risks, or if it's just maybe how important Kale is or how Vladimir has performed in scrims or how Orianna has done. These aren't the early flex pick crushers that you do, but here comes level 6x Smithy. Smithy has the cast, Valorant trying to jump away. Jackie Love low, Leyland coming in, but the cast will knock Jackie straight into the waiting arms of Core JJ and double lift. Core will fall, but that's another one for Team Liquid. They're 3 1 up. And TL split focus a little bit. They had a free kill on Baolan, but then they tried to go for more and they end up getting the two for one. I want to see how many turret plates they can get after that. But this was such a good setup from Team Liquid. The Gangplank Ultimate is available, Smithy hits level six, and this was all doable because of how poorly that early game dive went for Invictus Gaming. Leon, was, uh, Leon could not get that bot lane ahead. They hit the level sixes, and everything was primed and poised for Team Liquid. They are trying to take advantage of the lack of summoner spells, and here we get to see the replay once again. And you could see IG was up because they did have Olaf in the river, but GP alt on top of it. I thought Baoland was just dead for sure, and I think a lot of TL did as well, but alting the Olaf back, I think was the right idea from X Smithy. He just packs a pretty big punch this early in the game. You can see in the picture-in-picture picture there, Core JJ did look for a gank on the mid lane. Rookie had to burn his flash to get away. Core has been absolutely on point with the grand entrances, with those Rakan engages. He's now got level six. His ultimate is primed and ready to go. X Smithy's ulti is going to be up soon. Same for Impact. And I think Team Liquid can just look to make a repeat of this playdown bot, especially with no flashes available. The thing they have to just be careful of is the positioning of Rookie. He now has mid push. You can see that he's already pathing towards bot. I don't think he's going to look for a play. I think he's just going to look for vision. Never mind. He's going to look for a play. Yeah. He's got the blast count to jump to in. see him in that tri brush. And as soon as he shows, that's where Rookie goes. He's got the angle. Here comes the engage. Crowstorm used. Double lift. The one caught out. Feared up. But Core JJ gets the chance from the side. And Double lift is still alive underneath the tower. Double lift. The shockwave will get him in the end. IG find a kill. Great setup by IG there. And even though Core JJ did pretty much everything he could to try and save it, the fact that he was able to sneak away from mid lane was huge. And we talked about it. Rookie, he was the one member that Team Liquid had to be careful of oh, because of how much Shai control has no he had. Or alt. Does have the flash. Smite will come down. Shy trying to wait this one out. Flashes away way too late, and the cast will land on his head. Beautifully played there by TL. They're not slowing down themselves. They're looking to answer. Now IG make their way mid, but Jensen is going to be safe. TL still lead with the kills and the gold. They do lose Cloud Drake, but that's fine. It gives uh, birth to the Infernal that I imagine they're going to look to contest to a little bit later on. And this game is actually getting very fast paced, which you would usually expect to be more of an IG type game. It's just a matter of how well does TL fight back. They often try to play to figure out what the other team is doing and deny it. And right now, IG is actually just trying to crash and control bottom lane. Look at the control wards and Leon's positioning. So hard for IG to really do too much here. No Crystal, no Killer Instinct. 
Let's draw attention to the bot side of the map very quickly and notice some of this vision that has been set up by Invictus Gaming. They're utilizing the prior that they constantly have in mid to keep track of where the enemy jungler is at all times. But Xmithy is going to come in through the lane and cover the bot side because he knows that the next play is likely going to be happening around this side of the map. Now, Core JJ has consistently kept a control ward in that first bush in the bottom lane. It means that Smithy can, Xmithy can sneak in. They then cleared out the control that was in the second bush. So as they push up this wave, Xmithy could look for a dive. Yeah, that's a great point, Manic. And notice as well that the Gangplank ultimate is up to Team mm -hmm. Liquid have the rise set on the bot side of the map. And honestly, it feels like this game is just a a lot of play through bot, play through bot. Which AD carry can get ahead first? And this is the type of play that TL wants to be able to replicate, where they're playing heavily around bottom lane, getting double if gold, but also where their solar lanes are holding the line against the Shy and Rookie. That's where so many teams falter against IG, is just Rookie and the Shy completely running over people. But if Jensen and Impact can continue to do okay in these lanes, X Smithy can look for bottom side and that would be TL's way to victory. In pick and ban, we asked how much impact Leon could have in the early game because when both team fights comp bash against each other later on, it's X Smithy on the Gragas who would provide more. So far, Leon has been matched man to man by X Smithy and once again, we're gonna see a gank towards the mid lane. Bowland here. Leon just off towards the top side of Smithy, looking to go in. Counter Jensen gank. jumping forward, the counter gank coming out, the shockwave already gonna land, and Jensen is low. But here comes Core JJ, and once again, the quickness will stop them in their tracks. X Smithy so low, shut down. IG able to find the counter gank in mid. Just IG laying in wait. Not exactly what you would expect, but the patience pays off for IG here, and now Fiddlesticks has alt if he wants it. Team of Blake used in the top lane impact. Force quite low here. The Shy might chase him underneath the tower. Bowerland there in position for the Crow Storm. Core JJ flashes in and shuts down Rookie. Here comes the Crow Storm, but Bowerland is in no man's land. One more order would be enough to take him out. And then goes oh. in Jensen, but the stopwatch is there in time. Double lift lands the feathers from long range and finds the kill. TL then jumping on IG the moment before IG wanted to have the engage and the kill going through to the bottom lane. Double lift and core JJ is huge as impact presses on. It's a battle of wits between Team Liquid and IG. Whenever someone makes a move, the other answers. And it feels like while IG came out on top initially in the play, they overstepped, they overstayed, and Team Liquid answered back. Very reminiscent of what we saw the last time these two teams met, going pound for pound, battling each other. But I am so impressed with how Team Liquid are competing with Invictus Gaming in the early game. Team, Team Liquid are showing us it wasn't just a one-off. It wasn't just a fluke. It wasn't just IG having a bad day. They can challenge IG on any given day of the week. Core JJ is going to meet up here with Baolan, but for the moment, not too much more is going to happen. Double lift with an 800 gold lead over Jackie Love. See how they move that around the map because they've officially kind of switched their lane assignments. The plates are over. They move towards Rift Herald and they can actually use that to break open mid lane if they so choose. Tarot is also being set up. As you were saying, Jack, going to be using that one likely to try and break open the mid lane and the Infernal also spawning in about 40 seconds. Invictus Gaming have control over the bot side. They're looking to try and trade this right now, and I want TL to go mid. With three people showing bottom, TL needs to move fast and immediately try and push mid. Yep. And they can push top if they want to. The Rift will take care of mid, and Xmithy very quickly goes to invade the top side of IG's jungle and move their control that way. And the question is, how much do you trade here? Team Liquid will open up that mid lane tier one. Are they going to push for more? Xmithy here, stealing away the red, gets it, but the Shy is on his way. Xmithy has no flash, has no way out of this one, and the Shy should just be able to secure it. He'll take down the Gragas, and Team Liquid didn't get too much more out of that mid lane rift home. You have to be so careful against the Shy, the smallest of, it, of windows he's going to be able to take advantage of, and that is disaster for Team Liquid, as not only did the Shy get a kill in red buff, the Infernal Drake goes to IG. Good punish there from the Shy. Game still very even, but that Infernal will give Invictus Gaming a little bit of extra gold that you don't quite get to see on the scoreboard. 
Remember that both teams do still want to team fight later on into the game. Scaling is quite strong on both sides. Medic said it earlier. The gangplank, uh, sorry, the Gragas will offer a little bit more utility and power in these later game fights, but it cannot be understated how strong the Vladimir plus Oriana combo can be in these late game fights. And you can see where the gold is sitting for Invictus Gaming. A thousand gold lead for Rookie in the mid lane, but Doublelift has the same for Team Liquid. Mm. If Doublelift can play these team fights effectively, he can be a difference maker for this team. And a 400 gold lead for Impact, who's also just picked up the healing reduction. I wonder where we're gonna see the MR itemization come through for Team Liquid, because when we look at the team comp, something we haven't talked about much, Vettius, is that Vladimir, Oriana, and Kaisa often aren't all paired together because of the percentage of magic damage that they're gonna end up doing, but with the composition that TL has put together, there's not that much room to fit in the MR. Yeah, you're right, Jat. It's there's a lot of how do we say? It? I suppose you could also argue that the uh, more will likely come out from the gangplank as well. But you're right. There's not a huge amount of uh, magic resistance coming out. I wonder if we'll see a locket come out from the side of Team Liquid to try and help mitigate some of the bursts that will likely come out from Invictus Gaming. In any case, we kind of head into a bit of a lull state right now as yeah. we're 16 and a half minutes into the game. There's no real objectives to play around outside of some of these side lanes. And I like what TL did here. They pushed in mid. They knew they had a wave stacking bot, and they then looked to control bot side river to allow Jensen to play for this. But it gives them enough time to then move back to mid so that IG can't get anything in return. And I feel like so much of the game is still undecided because even though TL has that 1.5k gold lead, they've given up two drakes to IG. So. IG still looking to push the tempo with this Olaf, and TL still looking to trade objectives. It is a back and forth. And IG looking for the mid lane fight here. Team Liquid will use the explosive cast just to knock them away. Leyland is on a flank, but Core JJ is in a really good position to catch him out here. Leyland gonna have to pop the Ragnarok, runs away with it. And Team Liquid able to defend. Bowerland though maybe looking for a little bit of a Barney as he's got the Crow Storm, he's got the Flash, decides against it. And since the lane has opened up, Jensen's actually gotten a lot of side lane farm to bring himself back into this rookie matchup, getting multiple lanes pushing. You can see the bot lane and the top lane both pushing fairly well for TL, so they're starting to get some map control. They definitely are. The question now becomes how these two teams play the next few minutes because we do see, as you say, Jensen in a side lane for Team Liquid. He has teleport. He can rejoin a fight. Impact always has that cannon barrage to impact a fight if it goes down. But knowing Invictus Gaming, knowing how they like to play, they'll be looking to force fights around the map. So the one thing I will say about Invictus Gaming is while often they try to force and take fights that they arguably shouldn't, I think LPL teams as a whole, especially the top end ones, are very good at playing around item spikes. They have a very good awareness of when they are strong and when they're capable of forcing these fights. And I think if you look across the itemization, I don't know if they feel fully confident given that uh, Jakulov has not completed his second item. So I think for the time being, the primary goal for both these teams will just be to take a step back, chill a little bit, scale up. Whereas I think TL actually have a lot more control because they have the Gunblade on Akali along with the Trini Force on Impact. So if anyone's going to be looking to set up a little bit more of the vision control on the enemy side of the map, I feel Team Liquid is in a slightly better power point given their itemization. Just thinking back to how much goes into this game, Team Liquid, if they could start this group stage 2-0, and zero, having taken down both Damwon and IG with only AHQ remaining, you would expect them to be able to start 3-0. But that's looking too far ahead. They still have to find the way to break this game open against IG. It is a very hopeful picture, though, for LCS fans, for people back in North America watching Team Liquid looking to top their group, looking to really challenge some of the best in the world. Jensen going in, Bowland tries to flash away, but the Shuriken had landed, and Jensen takes the kill. Beautifully done by Jensen, who has been, just had to withstand Rookie in so much of this laning phase, used his teleport bot early, fell further behind. But with the side lanes, with the vision control, TL is trying to kind of slow play IG out of this game. And we talked about it, right? TL, they feel confident with their solo laners and their itemization that they should be the ones setting up vision Let's control go. in the enemy jungle. Impact and Shy going for an all-in. Shy looking for the damage here. Impact healing up. The cannon barrage comes down. Sanguine Pool will dodge a lot of it, but the battles are there, and Impact just about falls. The Shy wins the 1v1, but Double Lift's on his way. The rest of IG chasing him down, though. Rookie's going to shield up Leon and Team Liquid will not be able to find a counter kill. And it comes down to the solo laners of Invictus Gaming. This is why you can never count this team out. The Shy finding a very important 
uh, kill onto Impact showcases that IG are more than ready to fight in this game. Team Liquid pulled ahead on day one thanks to an Impact solo kill on the enemy top laner. This is the Shy getting the solo kill onto Impact, and the question will be how does IG use that for pressure? Because they get the kill, they get the turret, but as far as that goes, it seems like the end of the play. Well, have another look at it because it was incredibly close in the middle of this fight. Yeah, the main things you got to look for in these GP versus Vladimir duels is how does the barrels factor into it? And it looked like the Shy was able to completely dodge away from the barrels and really just take the space away from Impact, not to mention that nice ward that Impact was trying to flash into. Uh, the shy, in the middle of the fight. The Shy also utilizing his, uh, or playing around his Crimson Rush extremely well. You know, you saw that he got two max damage Qs mm. off because he started with one and he was able to get that rotation through. So, well played by him. He is going for the early Morellonomicon to help with that, uh, to provide that healing reduction against the likes of TL. Um, and again, like, we kind of enter a bit of a neutral state. Now we do see the Infernal, uh, sorry, the third Drake of the game going down towards Team Liquid because of the shenanigans that were happening up towards the top side. Baron is alive, and again, we're kind of looking at these itemization spikes to come through. Two items now done for both AD carries. Double is very close to completing his third. Uh, it looks like a Leandri's also going to be coming out from Jensen as they go for a fight in mid. Jumps in onto Jackie Love. Jackie Love flashes away, but already caught JJ's dead. Jensen trying to get the damage down, but the killer instinct from Jackie Love was beautiful. X Smith is going to kill Baron down towards the bottom of the fight, and now it's an all right brawl in the jungle. Leon going forward, trying to take down. Impact, but Impact survives. Don't want to get the kill. Rookie takes him down. Smithy now will get a counter onto the enemy AD carry, and people are falling left, right, and center. And it ends up being a two for three in favor of Team Liquid. They end up playing that very well, but expect the. Oh, oh, oh! He's dead. He's dead. <laughs> Three. Close there from Rick Smith. He almost gets away, but yeah, very even fight. And TL, they were the ones that were trying to force that one. We talk a lot about these itemizations, and again, it was TL recognizing this is a good place to try and force this fight. Jackie Love is a little bit overextended. We can collapse on him, but you're seeing the power of this fear right here and how it just yeah. locks the Rakan down. And then such a good ultimate from Jackie Love to dodge out from Jensen's execution to force Jensen out of the fight and allow both solo laners and Leon of IG to start trying to clean up. And on the back side, the shot pushed Double Lift away, but Double was able to pick up a kill and really just, I think, an inexcusable face check at the end by Jackie Love and some clever footwork by X Smithy to nearly make it out with this flash. Unfortunately for X Smithy, Rookie had flash too and gets him. The funny thing about that is Rookie is taking the blast gun over, thinking he's heading in that direction. As he's <laughs> yeah. midair, he's like, no! <laughs> So he ends up having to use his flash as well. A lot of summoner spells down for the side of Invictus Gaming. Doublelift actually the only player with a flash in this game right yes, now. And uh, we'll see how they utilize that in the coming minutes. Baron is alive. A lot of itemization is now done. And both these teams should be looking to fight in the next few minutes. One and a half thousand gold lead for Team Liquid, but we talked about the solo laners of Invictus Gaming. You now have four kills on Rookie. Mm. Shy is 2-1-2. Two, Spellbreaker and the Ludens complete on that Oriana. If he finds one good shockwave, it could spell doom for Team Liquid. And much of the uncertainty about IG coming into this World Championship was based off of which rookie would show up. Would it be the rookie who was a World Champion, or would it be the rookie that we saw in Summer Split, or would it be something in the middle? And this game, he's actually played extremely well, winning the lane very handily, having the four kills now, and if IG is to win this game, it's likely off the back of a big shockwave. Have their eyes set on the mid-tier one for now with the Gangplank in top lane. They could use the GP ultimate to clear it out. Ooh, flanking TP coming in. So the Shy does not have his teleport. That was quite a... That's a very far quite away flank. flank. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no one from Invictus Gaming in a face check the jungle. It did mean Invictus Gaming pulled off of the mid lane tower. Shockwave's gonna land here. Jackie Love jumping in with the killer instinct. Jensen not gonna be able to save his top laner. And IG find a quick kill in the top lane. And that is one example of how quickly IG can strike. We ended up seeing this in day one against the, in their AHQ game. So many of the fights was just engaged to one or two people dead and the other team couldn't even fight back. That fight top lane, Jensen was there, yeah. right? He was there for a 2v2, but Impact was actually dead before anyone on TL could accurately respond, and IG gets an advantage. And I love that you bring that point up, chat, because in their fifth and final game to qualify for Worlds, the thing that broke the game wide open was a single support misplay. The enemy support was slightly out of position. Invictus Gaming found that pick, snowballed it into a Baron. 
And it just goes to highlight that this team, if they see a very small opportunity to try and force a pick or a play, they will leap on it and sometimes they overcommit and it ends up hurting them. But often it can result in big advantages and swings in the game. Because I remember the overcommit times. I remember when they realm warped into Jensen on Orianna at MSI and just got five man shockwave. So Team Liquid can play on that. Team Liquid can hope that IG overstep even if they start winning the fight. Just an incredibly close game as TL again just kind of resets and tries to bring things together. Watch for the Shy, who's level 16 now, two levels up on anyone else in this game, but also watch for Double Lift to see if he can avoid the engage and try and carry the fight from the back. Team Liquid have control of the river. Invictus Gaming willing to give it up for the moment. It's only a cloud would only match their own. IG may just say, well, we'll take the mid lane tower. It has been a thorn in our side for the last 26 minutes. They'll take it down. They'll give up Fryo on the Drake, but they're going to keep pushing in here. And TL not even grouping five around mid lane, actually. They may end up losing multiple turrets because Impact's making a run up top side. Tier two mid for maybe tier two bot. But now... And Inv they lose Baron in mid control. Yeah, exactly. Invictus Gaming can make a beeline straight towards the Baron. If nothing else, they can try and force the teleport out from impact. They don't have control over the top wave, but I think IG, they're just going to start yeah. it off. Big mistake by TL, but we're going to see how this one plays out. They can try to Look teleport in as they've started. Batman ba has a great flank position knows. here. Yep. 5,000 HP left on the Baron. Invictus Gaming is on it. Teleport's going to come in from impact. He's joining through the mid lane. But they got what they sense. wanted. This is exactly what they wanted. The Baron was never the main objective. It was the teleport out from impact. Oh, Jensen because now he can't threaten that flank, and now it gives the ability for the Shy, whose TP is going to come up soon. So this means that Invictus Gaming will have more control to set up for the Baron later, but of course, well, they've now lost control over yep. mid lane, and TL should come out on top in terms of the tower trades. Yeah, TL actually ends up winning that one because IG didn't pull for the fight. I feel like any time you do a Baron setup, if you just pull off through the top lane because you've lost mid priority, you're probably gonna end up losing something. So. Really some back and forth stuff because to me it felt like Impact shouldn't have gone top, uh, but then IG was actually unwilling to take that 5v5 as TL moved into the river. 27 minutes in, one and a half thousand gold separates these two teams. Both have two dragons, one tower advantage for Team Liquid. More has been completed on Impact. You've got Hexagonbade and the Leandries and a needlessly large rod for Jensen as well. And really, Medic, games are the world's group stages so far have been this intense. Yeah. We saw SKT RNG at the start of the day. TL versus Dom Juan was incredibly close for so much of it. This is what kind of seems to be deciding who the best team is, which is a little bit different than the skills that were being tested through most of the summer split. The meta or just the way the team's playing feels like it's changing a little bit because usually if you're thinking, okay, 28 minute, fairly slow paced game, you're thinking that favors TL. So getting to this point, I think TL should be reaching closer to their comfort zone. The fear, though, is Vladimir, level 16, Oriana, uh, and Kaisa. And this is the thing. When it comes to the LPL, I think that they are the best team fighting region in the world. They have so many top tier teams when it comes to just the 5v5 and the raw talent that exists in those rosters. And you can never count out Invictus Gaming when it comes to the 5v5. And that's what makes this so exciting. We know they're going to happen. Level 16s are almost coming out for Double Lift and Jensen as well. Now the Baron is being set up. The Predator boots just got popped from McSmithy. Invictus Gaming grouping up as five in mid. The Shy does have his teleport. Could be in a side lane, but instead they say we want to be five men strong in case Team Liquid look for that instantaneous Rakan engage. And the side laning has basically just stopped because yep. the winner of the next fight probably wins the game if they're able to either just push straight down mid or get enough of an advantage to take Baron and then build a large gold lead. So either team is trying to get just the right setup and it's actually TL who's pulling back and getting the side lanes pushing. Yeah. The ARAM right now is being broken by Team Liquid. Jensen heading up towards topside. He doesn't have his teleport. Victus Gaming going to use this time to move towards the bot side of the map, get a bit more control and uh, the team really has strong control over the ban. That's likely going to change now, given that Invictus Gaming do have priority over mid. Jensen just sitting in fog of war, trying to scout out what Invictus Gaming is up to. But no, no wards are actually thrown down. They only, they only have one control ward yeah. in the inventory. So uh, 
Invictus Gaming not really going to get much off the back of that, but TL, they don't really have many wards either. I think yeah. both teams kind of need a reset right now. Yeah, IG is going for reset. The question is, does TL match, or do they actually try and rush something with the Baron? Because this feels like the moment where they'd want to recall, and I guess it does seem like teams handshake a little bit, but I felt maybe a five-second delay from TL, and we'll see if IG can yeah. get an advantage off of that. Because this is where Invictus Gaming will be able to get back out onto the map faster. They'll be able to move into the Baron and start putting that vision down. And we can already see it coming out from Lan. Uh, Impact doing what he can to try and zone them away, but this will give Invictus Gaming priority over the river. And it's the part of the game where one wrong step or one great play can decide absolutely everything. So dodging in and out of those corridors with a shockwave primed from Rookie, the Spellbinder, 100 stacks, the biggest shockwave possible. They get mid prior. We saw TL was a little bit slow on that reset. Now they've just started it. TL has to find a way in. Invictus Gaming inviting Team Liquid into the fight. Fights They're bursting it. Left on the Baron, it's almost fallen. IG looking to steal it away under Team Liquid's noses and they'll take it. Jensen's jumping into the back of the pit as they look at the fight. The Shy on the front line, forcing double lift away. And IG are able to survive Shy. Shockwave! Oh! But the Shockwave finds three. Invictus Gaming find their fight. They find the Baron. They almost find the Ace. Impact tries to flash away, but he is chased down with a killer instinct. And only Jensen survives. And IG can push bot lane and probably end this game. They don't have minions mid, but if they make their way down there, they're going with the TP. Invictus Gaming obliterate Team Liquid. You cannot underestimate this team. We've been building up towards this point. The Vladimir Oriana combo came to fruition. Invictus Gaming walk away with the Baron. They walk away with the kills, and they're looking to walk away with this game. Because of the way they split after that, I don't think they're going to be able to end the game. They are going to be able to break multiple inhibitor turrets open as respawns are actually getting a little bit closer for TL, kind of maximizing this Baron power play. Rookie misses Shockwave, but Jensen can't follow. Inhibitor tower down in the mid alongside the inhib. The Shy trying to push in here, but it's actually only going to be two inhibitors that fall. All the turrets are down, but Invictus Gaming perhaps not able to get as much as they would have liked out of that. They didn't get the Nexus, but they already have a 6,000 gold power play. So watching this, they burst down the Baron as TL was a little bit late to it, but then the fight happens anyway, and the Shy zones out basically all of TL, and then the Shockwave <laughs> hits with the Fiddle Ultimate. That timing, TL funneled right into it and get destroyed. We talk so much about this team fighting ability and getting to see the combo come together for Invictus Gaming was so fun to watch. But also remember, all of this snowballs from the fact that Invictus Gaming reset first. They got to come back to the map first. They were the ones that got control over River and set up for the Baron, allowing them to start it off. And it's, it's fascinating how this whole yeah. game was decided simply by deciding to reset first. It's a surprising thing, but here they go on to Olaf. Koja J going in, looking for the damage, but look at how chunked he is. Just Baolan and Leon able to push him back. Five members strong, Invictus Gaming down in this bottom lane. The Baron has a minute left before that buff expires, but Invictus are trying to make the most of it while they can. Yeah, and with the double Banshee's Veil, it's hard for TL to engage, but the Shy so forward. So much damage onto Xmithy already. The Shy going low, ticking down. The Rookie's he's already taken down one. The dive in from Jackie Love. Xmithy next on the menu. It's all on Jensen, but he's fallen as well. And Team Liquid have been wiped in their base. Invictus Gaming put their sights on the Nexus, and they will find vengeance for MSI. IG take the win over Team Liquid. And that has got Feel good for Rookie and the rest of IG. 6-1-7 on that Oriana. A very close game throughout the first 30 minutes, but then it is the mid lane priority, the ebb and flow back and forth. They get the jump on TL, they get the Baron, and then they crush back-to-back -back team fights for a fast victory. It ultimately all came down to one big team fight where IG had the better setup, they had the better execution, and they ended up coming out on top. But this game was very close. We knew yeah. it was going to be about scaling. We, I loved what we saw from McSmithy in the early game. He was matching and controlling Leon incredibly well. And I feel like what could have been a terrible early game for Team Liquid was actually controlled in a very reasonable way. So I think TL can still feel pretty confident. At the end of the day, it all came down to one team fight.
Team Liquid should definitely still hold their heads high after that, especially after beating Dan One Gaming yesterday. We asked what form IG would be in coming into Worlds. They looked weaker. The reigning world champions perhaps going to be knocked off their perch early on. But if yep. IG keep playing like this, they're definitely going far in this tournament. And they're still the world champions. Yep. yep. Right? That hasn't changed yet. They didn't win MSI after going 9-1 and one in the group stage, but this team has been lethal, especially in group stages of international competition. So IG definitely wanted to show up. And to me, Rookie looked very good. And that could be a message to the rest of the world championship to watch out. And I think many fans... Uh, look at Invictus Gaming and see that they've had a difficult split, but it's been difficult for many of the players. Like, there have been a lot of issues, um, and players have been subbed out. They haven't been able to build synergy. They have a new jungler in Leanne, and I think that this ramp-up time that they've had to just focus on the gameplay, get back to the level that they were at, just focus on improving their teamwork and ability to play at the highest level, we're now getting to see the culmination of that hard work and preparation. We definitely are, and I think we'll continue to see it as the tournament progresses. From a Team Liquid yeah. side, you don't take too much hurt from this. It was one mistake you can evaluate that moment, but the rest of the game was pretty good. Yeah, until you have two losses in the group stage, you're still in full control of finishing first. So I think that's how Dom Juan looks at it from day one. I think that's how TL should look at this loss as well. I totally agree. That's it from us for now. We're going to hand it over to the State Farm Analyst Desk. Thank you so much, Medic. Entertaining game to watch. Nerve-wrecking one if you're a Team Liquid fan or an IG fan, for that matter. Uh, Frosker, and I saw you making a grimace in that, at that last note from Verius. Uh, can you explain what was up? Uh, I'm going to pump the brakes on the casters a little bit right there. Uh, this is Invictus Gaming looked real rough there. That, to me, was like three members played well. The Shy... Uh, Jackie Love and Rookie, and there still seems to be really massive holes in Baolan and uh, Lian in terms of their consistency and performance. I think Leon in particular, uh, 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 post 15 minutes, looked good for me. I think uh, pre-15, specifically the dive in the bot side of tower, dip definitely was botched. Yeah. That one was unfortunate. <laughs> he throws Axe at Krugs, and he's like, ah, I don't need that one anyway. Let's go for the dive. <laughs> it was unfortunate. I think tower aggro was a, was a big call for that one. But then when it came down to supporting the solo laners, Absolutely great. I mean, it ma they made it easy for him, to be and fair. And being a devil's advocate here, um, I respect the fact that you're being very critical towards IG. It is, they are the world champions, and they've had a very rocky summer split in the LPL, and they still made it here. So um, should we cut him just a little more slack in these first two, first two games that they did win, knowing that hopefully they should ramp up? or not. I think it speaks to the strength of the performing members that Invictus Gaming are here and are picking up these victories. So we heard them talk about Rookie. I definitely think his number, uh, his name's going to come out as well as the Shy. When you look at that draft, you're also then looking at their signature picks. Rookie is known especially for two champions, Syndra and Orianna. The Shy is definitely known for his Riven and his Vladimir. So it feels like Invictus Gaming are kind of going back to their bread and butter, these comfort picks. But otherwise, that was a composition that had so much magic damage on it. Yeah, I want to go for what I didn't expect out of all of it because like Team Liquid were competitive, they were strong, and it was all off the back of X Smithy. Two games in a row already where X Smithy's come in strong, his J4 team fights in the last one, his Gragas team fights in this one, or at least his ganks. Incredible play from him. And yeah, here's the thing, it felt like the strategy from Invictus Gaming was actually to try to deny X Smithy. They banned away his Jarvan, the yes. other pick that he was quite successful with. They made sure that they got the Gragas versus Olaf matchup. So coming into this, I have no doubt that Invictus Gaming were like, if we can shut this guy down, we can shut out TL, but X Smithy was still able to find these plays. This, to me, was the most important part of this. He kept the Vladimir down and out for a good while. He actually gave a lot of resources and time to uh, being able to get the GP ahead. So once again, great stuff coming out of X Smithy, and it makes uh, Team Liquid's chances in this group really high to be able to get out. To get out, I think that's what we're looking at as well. But when we look at this game specifically, after the early game, they put IG behind. IG is a team, however, who is very comfortable playing for behind. More often than not, in the LPL, they find themselves in a deficit. And why do they pull out the important wins? It is because they have those two players who can do a lot and much more than other players with little resources. I'm, of course, talking about Rookie and the Shy. Yeah, so you say two members, I agree, because at the end of the day, they have two insane players in them. Like, coming into the tournament, the reason why I made my hot take on Invictus Gaming coming out first and ultimately believed in them, 
being able to shake off that summer split jitters was because at the end of the tournament, they should have the top five players in the, like three of the top five players in the tournament in the Shy, Rookie, and Jackie Love. Like these guys, when they are set up properly, when Bao Lan and specifically Leon's able to gel with the team, they will be able to come in. Raz, you said yesterday at the opening of the group stage, my hot take is that IG will be a convincing first seed. Yeah. How far are they now off from you from being convincing in the so, group so far? So the definition of convincing is always going to be a debate. Uh, Wishy-washy. But we're close to the six wins, and that's all I want oh, to make it happen. man, Raz, it is not it is not. To me, that's convincing. Is it convincing in game score or in how these games there are won? we go. This but, is what I like. This is the I conversation mean, we need. I'm still willing to cut them some slack uh, because because they always cl also close out this game as we take a look at the final fight, which gives IG the Baron Frosk. Uh, you know this team very, very well, even though it doesn't look exactly the same as last year, but they played this out perfectly. Uh, yeah, and if you take a peek at the levels, the fact is, is that Vladimir just has a massive experience lead basically on everyone. So they're going to feel very confident to look for this forced 5v5 and then, oh, that rookie shockwave, yeah. that one felt good in your soul. That was like the 2014 Champions Winter rookie shockwave. <laughs> wave coming through that just ended things. But you can see, you know, why we keep saying their names and why we'll still have confidence in IG. You said it, it's the shy and rookie, but I need more from them. I need to be talking about Lian. I need to be talking about Balan. I need to be talking about Jackie Love's consistency if Invictus Gaming are going to be a convincing first seed. I agree. I think Jackie Love has already done that. it and only get that better for me. That is not convincing. That is all TL right, the entire right. way and then a right turn. But I think this is more of a story because I know for Group C, we talked about that being the De group of death, where now I look at group D and say, uh, yeah, Team Liquid is starting to come in big. You always have to give Dom Juan that respect. And Invictus Gaming, where people called them out and said that they, you know, a lot of people didn't believe they would be making it, it out of the groups based off their current performance in summer. No, I, they're still the world champions. <laughs> at the end of the day, you give them that respect. And so I think group D and group C are incredibly hard. So uh, good luck. The ceilings are insane in that group is, is what I would say for most of the teams. We will be much more informed because I think for Damwon, we're kind of in the middle of things right now. We don't really know. We'll be more informed after next game. But this is what kills me. We're in the middle of things for Damwon, but I actually think Invictus Gaming and Damwon are kind of in the same bucket. Like they have uh, teams where you have two members that everyone is focusing on, yes. and then it's about who else shows up with them, and that's buying you the win. But what's the difference? IG has two wins. <laughs> okay, so we'll see if Damwon get their first win because on the other side of the break, we've got AHQ and Damwon searching for their first win of groups. See who pulls it off after this. to double it, but the knockup's gonna land, double it, heals up underneath the turret, still alive, and Leon is tanking! Got him first! Blood to Team Liquid! But he has the cast, Bowland trying to jump away, Jackie Love low, Leon coming in, but the cast will knock Jackie straight into the waiting arms of Core JJ and double it! Core will fall, but that's another one! Looking to top their group, looking to really challenge some of the best in the world, Jensen going in, Bowland tries to flash away, but the Shuriken had landed, the Shy on the front line, forcing double lift away, and IG are able to survive, Shy, Shockwave! Ooh. But the Shockwave finds three, Invictus Gaming find their fight, they find the Baron! So much damage onto it, Smithy already, the Shy going low, ticking down, the Ooh. he's already taken down one, the dive in from Jackie Lovick, Smithy next on the menu, it's all on Jensen, but he's fallen as well, and Team Liquid have been wiped in their base. Back on our grind, you know what it is. We gotta win, win, win. 